I mean, how can you absolutely be sure that they're placed correctly? I mean, ultrasound obviously is going to give you at least the outline of the of the the uterus itself, so you know that you're in the proximity. Uh, so obviously, an HSG gives you a idea of the the uh, uterine cavity, so you know where the uterine cavity is. So I, I just have a hard time visualizing that you see two, you know, sterilization objects in a in a flat plate and say, yeah, they're placed correctly. I, I, who who can really say make that statement? Yeah, I mean. The other thing of note is that there was one investigator who um, was doing the HSGs himself rather than having the radiologist do it, and his technique um, one might describe as a bit aggressive um, for this procedure, and in fact was probably recanalizing past the device at that time point um, because of the amount of pressure and the duration of time that he was actually distending the uterus because he was using it as an endpoint, basically the woman saying that hurts too much stuff, and so at that point. Is probably opening the tube as issues and other applications yeah. that they just change. Yeah, but let me interrupt you for a minute. But I don't think, see, I don't think that's the real issue. I think the real issue is you got a great result because everybody went in and you knew ahead of time that everybody was occluded, okay? And that's great. But now you're asking the panel to say that it's okay not to have that check for occlusion. I think you can buy, most people would likely buy either ultrasound or x-ray for placement, but you don't have that occlusion. And now what we don't know is how many of those 16 would have gotten pregnant, okay, had them had they not been using some other form of contraception, and therefore would your results have been the same? And I don't know if our statistician could do it very quickly, but I mean, how many pregnancies would you have had to have had, you know, in order to make your results not look anywhere near as good as they do? So the issue I don't think is whether the device works and it occludes. I don't have this issue at all. The issue is, you know, we've pre had data presented that says nobody gets pregnant on this, but everybody got checked to make sure they were occluded. Now the question is, nobody's going to get checked to make sure they're occluded. Is the pregnancy rate going to be the same? And that's a little more difficult to believe. Let's put it that way at this point. to the voting uh, panel recommendation options, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, read the uh, options uh, for pre-market approval applications. Um, the medical device amendments to the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, the Act, as amended by the Safe Medical Devices Act of 1990, allows the Food Drug Administration to obtain a recommendation from an expert advisory panel on designated medical device pre-market approval application, PMAs, that are filed with the agency. The PMA must stand on its own merits and your, and your recommendation.
recommendation must be supported by safety and effectiveness data in the application or by applicable publicly available information. <coughs> safety is defined in the Act as reasonable assurance based on valid scientific evidence that the probable benefits to health under conditions on intended use outweigh any probable risks. Effectiveness is defined as reasonable assurance that in a significant portion of the population, the use of the device for its, for its intended uses and conditions of use when labeled will provide clinically significant results. Your recommendation options for the vote are as follows. Approval, if there are no conditions attached. Approvable with conditions, the panel may recommend that the PMA be found approvable subject to specified conditions such as physician or patient education, labeling changes, or further analysis of existing data. Prior to voting, all of the conditions should be discussed by the panel. And then third, not approvable. The panel may recommend that the PMA is not approvable if the data do not provide a reasonable assurance that the device is safe or if a reasonable assurance has not been given that the device is effective. Uh, next is uh, the FDA, a uh, member of the FDA, for some final comments at this point. Nope, no, no comments from the FDA at this point. No, we have no comments. No comment. It's very politically correct. All right, then it's uh, the company's uh, opportunity to come. I've written it down. I'm wrong. Uh, we, are, we have a motion on the floor to vote for approval with conditions. The conditions that were included uh, was the uh, hysterosalpingogram at this point be required uh, as was performed in the original study, but uh, the committee recommends that the FDA be amenable to having the company bring forth uh, further data on uh, alternative methodologies to look at correct placement and patency to approach uh, changing this particular recommendation. Number two, training uh, to include uh, knowledgeable hysteroscopists as a prerequisite for beginning to do these. Uh, in labeling, uh, we include that uh, we need to clarify the failure rate and place that, and the word was used was prominently, uh, that some uh, labeling need to address, and I'm going to paraphrase these, uh, the issue of a young age and potential sequelae, uh, that uh, an issue uh, be noted in the labeling. These are all labeling issues about metal sensitivity, electric artery, and pregnancy uh, subsequent to this procedure. Uh, that uh, we uh, have an issue or an inclusion about a recommended uh, length uh, for the procedure to the physician and a limit of 1,500 milliliters of saline for use in the patient. Uh, again, the success rate at 99.8% should be clarified or at least. Uh, uh, maybe not clarified, but something to the effect of the numbers or, you know, something that patients can understand with the, the number of patients that this has been performed in. A recommendation that the procedure be performed in the proliferative, <laughs> proliferative phase of the cycle, uh, that an educational written informed consent uh, be a, obtained and the company make an, an example to be provided to the physicians utilizing this device. Um, some recommendations included in the patient pamphlet concerning what to do if you miss a period, a quote-unquote fallback plan, which just what are you going to do if you are one of those where uh, they're unable to uh, insert this in both uh, tubal ostia. Um, definitely recommend the training as uh, previously stated, and then that uh, the continuation of the uh, uh, observation of the current patients for a total of five years, and then a better assessment that has, as, has been discussed of the failure of insertion rates uh, for patient counseling and patient labeling. Did I state those to the satisfaction of the committee? Okay. Uh, if there is no other discussion, then let's go ahead and begin uh, with a vote, and you're voting for approval with the pre-stated conditions. Let's go ahead and start with Dr. Nolan. I vote aye. I vote aye. Aye. Yes. Yes. I'm abstaining. Yes. 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 Okay. The motion passed.
passes with a vote of uh, eight yes, no, zero no's, and uh, one abstention. Uh, as is the um, custom, uh, we'd like to go around the table and uh, just have a brief uh, mention of why you voted the way you did. Let's begin on this side, Dr. Sure. Well, I think this device is as safe as any other devices on the market. Certainly transcervical sterilization is, is ideal. Uh, I think it may represent a significant improvement in uh, women's health care. Uh, and so I felt that, uh, that uh, we should approve the device. And I commend Conceptus on their, their PMA. Thank you. Uh, I voted uh, yes because the uh, device clearly met, met, and the studies presented, data presented, clearly met the criteria of safety and effectiveness that are required for approval. Thank you. This device clearly uh, meets those requirements for safety and effectiveness, but I am uh, cognizant of the issues that we've discussed particularly the use in younger individuals who may not fully appreciate the permanence of the procedure, and I think we've uh, belabored that point sufficiently that that should be conveyed to anyone who might use it at that age. Thank you. I abstain for religious reasons. Thank you. I voted yes because I believe this uh, offers women a, a, a less risky, more accessible procedure uh, for permanent sterilization. And I think Conceptus was very thorough in the materials, the large quantity of materials which you provide. Thank you. I voted yes because I think the device clearly met the um, criteria for safety and effectiveness, uh, as well as a favorable uh, risk-benefit ratio, particularly since it uh, offers the option of uh, sterilization without general anesthesia, which is not basically currently available. Thank you. I voted yes because I thought many of the concerns that were voiced during the discussion were addressed in the uh, final vote. Thank you. I, I voted yes because this uh, the results are very clear. I'm very impressed with the uh, sponsor's uh, data and all the discussion we had in panel to address all uh, borderline issues, and I, I voted yes for that reason. Thank you. I voted to approve the motion because I feel the company showed that the method is clearly safe and effective and that it has a great chance of improving health care for women in the United States. Thank you. I always allow the non-voting members if they'd like to make a comment at this, at this point, uh, what they think. I think this is a great addition to female contraception, and I commend the company. I think our deliberations um, are not just for today, but for tomorrow, and I hope the company proceeds post-haste putting them in place. Okay, no comments. Okay, and I always reserve the right for the last set of comments. I'd like to compliment the company on what I think is one of the best presentations of a PMA that I've seen in eight years here, and their data. Thank you very much. It made it for a very enjoyable day instead of a very difficult day as we've had a few here uh, in other times. I also would like to uh, commend the audience for their participation and uh, welcome their comments. Uh, some of them were uh, very good and uh, actually things out of it that uh, we had not thought of and were very good suggestions, so we appreciate that. And as always, I'd like to commend everyone at FDA for uh, all of their hard work and wonderful presentations and wonderful participation. And I think you guys do a great job, so thank you. And with that, Unless anyone else would like to uh, make some comments. Well, if you'd like to make some comments, otherwise we're going to close it up because we're 25 minutes late and I don't like to be late. I would just like to thank the panel for your deliberations. Thank you. All right, and so I'd like to thank the panel too. It was a great deliberation. Uh, please leave all your uh, paperwork here and they'll get it taken care of with the confidential issues. Thank you very much. Thank you for the attention. Good night. Show and tell. Five years, the failure rate looks greater than anyone expected. Could then there be some kind of contingency plan to follow that for another X amount of time? We can recommend it. You know, that's, yeah. So it'll depend on the performance of the product. Okay. Yes, are we saying?
saying if the product's really good, we want to penalize them to have them follow more? No, I thought you said if it was, I, I, did I understand it? I'm asking if I understood that right. If it's, if it's really low, yeah. it's doing really well. No, 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 no. If, it, if it's, um, if their people are getting pregnant on using this product. Well, if they are, yes. then you know there's a problem in five years. Well, that's right. what, yeah. But then what do you do? Well, that's information you'll have. That can be brought back. You know, the, the FDA will have that information. They can give a report, do whatever they need to do with that information. I, I think they would. Yeah, I think if you had that, uh, maybe I'm speaking. I'm, I shouldn't. Maybe they should tell me, but they do. But what I would do is, once you have that information, then you have to take action on that available information and decide based on the if the if the rates are, are poor, then uh, obviously someone needs to write a paper about it. it needs to be publicized. Uh, maybe. I, that kind of thing. I don't think you'd want to necessarily follow them more based on that. I think you probably got the information you need. So I did misunderstand you. I'm sorry. Private investigators would find each of us, bring us back here, and ask us why we approved this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we better get to voting pretty soon. Here.